Welcome r slash parents. A mother made my school bus driver cry and murdered her spirit over special presents. My mom just reminded me of this. I don't remember every detail because I was 5 sixths when this went down, but I do remember how bummed kids were after. Okay, so when I was 5 sixths, 1997, I rode the bus to and from school. Our bus driver was an older lady named Marge. I only remember her name because of Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and she was a super nice lady. She didn't have kids, so I think she thought of kids on her route as her makeshift grandkids. She got to know most of the kids that rode routinely and would give gifts on birthdays and special presents to some kids, not all, on Christmas or her nakab. Now, we all knew about the special presents, the older kids had told the younger kids, and it seemed like a general rule, that some kids got small wrapped gifts, like the size of an iPhone box, nothing big, and the rest of us got candy canes. I don't remember exactly what year this event happened, I think I was maybe in the first grade, because I was very aware of the special gifts and I know I had gotten a Barbie doll from her on my birthday, which landed just before school let out for summer break. Anyway, this happened just before Christmas break. Marge had already given special presents to the kids she always gave them to. It was after school. We were being dropped off at the bus stop. It was raining really hard, and I was already in a grumpy mood because the wind blew my umbrella inside out. Marge pulled up at the sidewalk, reminded us to put on our jackets and hoods which caused her to take a few seconds to open the door. That's when this crazy entitled mother starts wrapping her knuckles on the door, like really hard. Marge pulled that lever that opens the door, and even before it could open all the way, this M shoves the door open and stomps on, and, according to my mom, shouts, why do you give presents to four kids, and not my kids? I honestly don't remember what this woman had said, I remember her yelling and all of us are silent and watching. My mom hears Marge say, excuse me? This M begins on a tirade of calling Marge a predator and accusing her of nepotism, which made her look extremely uncomfortable, as my mom said, she looked like she was shocked in odd way. The M then says, are you touching these kids? Is that it? You're a molester. She's a goddamn molester. That's when someone's father gets on and yanks that crazy bitch off. I remember seeing her vanish like a magic trick, and then looking at Marge who was crying. My sweet old bus driver was openly weeping and sobbing. It was sad and uncomfortable, because at my age I didn't know what to do, and I barely talked, so I didn't know what to say, or if I should say anything to Marge. Marge allowed us to get off. I kept my head down as I passed her, feeling this icky, actually feeling in my chest. Outside, the M was yelling that it wasn't fair that only four families riders that Marge knew, almost personally, got gifts for Christmas and her two kids only got a stupid fucking candy cane. I do remember that part. I remember thinking, lady, we all got candy canes, so what? My mom walked me home, and just as we turned the corner a cop car came up the street. His lights weren't on, he kinda like crept by, if that makes sense. My mom had shaken her head and said, can you believe that crazy bitch? Is she sick in the head? The next week, last week of school, we had a sub driver, we had him until February. Marge returned, and she seemed to have lost her chipperness, like, she didn't come off as open and sweet like before. She stopped giving gifts altogether, and she didn't get involved, or ask us about our home lives, or our families anymore either. She was my bus driver, until I moved 3 years later, I wonder if she's still alive. That entitled mom didn't show up after that one time. I don't think I ever met her kids, or knew who they even were. But yeah, that crazy woman kinda murdered my bus driver's spirit. Sorry it was so long. My mom used to drive a bus for the small county where I went to school at. Parents would always try to get her fired for essentially BS reasons, and considering this was within the past decade, the heads of the dept a lot of times had her back, mainly because there was always video evidence, and every bus she got a hold of she managed to turn around behavior wise, years in a military family, and then the army she refused to take shit from anyone. Parents like that are just mad, because they think their kids are absolutely perfect angels who can never do anything wrong. 
This instance happened to be a sweet old lady who was just trying to do good in the community. If it was my mom, or even me now, she would have been thrown off the bus for even stepping on it in the first place. I'm a bus driver entitled parents WTFY. Do you think your kids are anything special? You're not doing them any favors. I really love being part of my kids lives in a small way. But we are such peons in the scheme of things we can't have an impact equal to that of school staff anything we do is is muted by both perceived and real reactions by school admins and our own superiors who answer to admin and community input. Complaints. Agreed. That's actually a great thing that a bus driver is that nice. Actually reminds me of a bus driver form a few years ago I had. She always talked to us and let us listen to music and she got me a Star Wars t-shirt for Christmas actually. She was the fucking best. I still think about the amazing crossing guard I had as a kid. She would give some kids gifts and talk to us and it felt good because she was like a grandma figure in a way. I still wonder about her and wonder if she's okay and if she's still alive. I would love to stop by see her and say hey look I grew up graduated high school and now have a kid of my own. My bus driver in elementary school was the best. He gave out the giant size candy bars at Halloween. At Christmas he gave out gifts of hats, gloves and scarves his wife knitted, maybe crocheted. At Valentine Day, all kids got homemade by his wife, fudge. Last day of school, all of us got a handwritten note from him that had something personal and congratulations making it through the year. Unfortunately it got ruined by a group of kids from another bus that got jealous. Parents complained and my bus driver was forced to stop. There was a sweet old couple who had a popcorn machine and made caramel popcorn balls and caramel apples for Halloween. They lived at the end of the street where I grew up. Everyone knew and loved the Browns. Stopping and getting a treat and story from them was really special. Eventually Mrs. Brown passed away, and Mr. Brown stopped for a couple of years. He finally set up again, and as we were a little older we made sure to spend some time with him on Halloween, cause we weren't trick or treating anymore. A lot of new people had moved into the neighborhood, and when the kids tried to go get a treat from Mr. Brown their parents would pull them away and say that he shouldn't be offering treats not individually wrapped, and that a single old man shouldn't be so excited to be around kids. I had known the Browns for about 10 years and he, they, only wanted the kids to feel special and be happy. This broke Mr. Brown's heart, and after one more year of sitting out front with no one stopping by he gave up. He died that year before Christmas of a broken heart. As a school bus driver, we are not allowed to give students gifts for any reason, even if it's just a sticker, because some kid may be allergic to the glue, or a pencil, possible weapon, or candy, again, allergies slash diabetics. Some drivers still do, but they keep it as low key as possible. It's probably because of Karens like this complaining to the district, who complains to the bus company or drivers, depending on how the district is set up, since some districts have their own buses, while others contract out, and then gift giving is prohibited. I did get some gift cards from students once, though. Nice kids, and I do miss them, but it is a bit of a stressful job and somewhat thankless most of the time. I imagine the special gifts weren't favoritism, but for kids that didn't get much for Christmas. In the small town my dad grew up in, bus drivers would babysit kids during route, if their parents got off late, bring the kids food, to take home to their siblings, and even give them hand-me-down slash oversized coats slash hat and glove sets. Not all of them, but at least the one my dad had. They took care of their kiddies and made sure they got in the door before going to the next stop if they lived close to the street. My dad would go through his bus driver's route, get to open the door for everyone getting off and then ride to the bus driver's house after, usually getting a snack at some point and getting to watch T.V and drink a glass of orange juice before being picked up by my grandma who was a single mom and worked all the time to support three kids. It was understood that his family was in need, and as far as I was told, no parents ever got upset with him getting different treatment to their kids. There was a wonderful lollipop lady Akira crossing guard at my primary school. She knew every single child, and chatted to them every day, gave us high fives, and always made us smile. 
I absolutely loved her and looked forward to my quick conversation with her every day when I crossed the road. I learned years later that a parent made a formal complaint over the high fives and completely crushed this woman's spirit. I cannot explain the anger I felt when my mom told me. There are so many innocent and loving people in the world that put 110% into their job and someone somewhere always finds a fucking issue and then makes them feel uncomfortable or inappropriate over high fives. If I could find the woman who complained I'd give her a high fist to the face. Also to insinuate something inappropriate towards someone who works with children is a huge huge deal and shock slash insult slash personal hurt. I don't know why people make accusations or complaints over non-issues when there are real issues in the world to tackle. That woman probably felt shame for no reason. This made me sad. Why did this random post on the internet that happened years ago to some random set of kids whose random grown-ups make me sad? Why does it make me wish that cop car pulled over back then used since police brutality on the M? Maybe because we all respect grandmothers and what they mean in our lives. Maybe for someone on the bus who didn't have a good childhood, loving parents or grandparents, this one lady made that kid's day by being in the bus. Even in the simple things like a candy cane can bring a smile to that kid's face. Maybe it's because we really don't want to see people being shut down and sad because they were doing their best in spreading love and joy around. In the midst of everything, we all still hold on to that hope of humanity so, when we see one light turned off, we can relate to it, by seeing the darkness increase. Maybe that's what ignites the fire within us to bring back that hope, and love that humanity has seemed to have failed, 